Guten Abend, meine Damen und Herren. Ich darf Sie im Namen der Erste Bank heute Abend recht herzlich in unserem Haus begrüßen. Mein Name ist Jennifer Rowe und ich bin verantwortlich für Goodbe. Sie werden in kurz herausfinden, was Goodbe eigentlich ist. Um, and you've certainly already figured out that German is not my native language. Um, so uh, I hope you don't mind if I, if I switch to, to English for the, most of the rest of the presentation. Um, three years ago, Erste Bank uh, started a cooperation with AG Kreativwirtschaft um, because they were absolutely persuaded not only of the um, growth potential in the sector, uh, but also the power of innovation that firms in the uh, creative industries obviously possess. This conviction has obviously, in uh, these difficult uh, economic times, uh, been confirmed. Um, and particularly now, it's been shown that flexible structures, creativity, and an ability to improvise um, are central factors uh, of any uh, Unternehmen firm. <laughs> I'm translating as I go along. Um, these are obviously talents and tools which firms in the creative industries uh, possess uh, in a particularly high degree. So um, we're actually seeing at the moment, obviously as you are, that many um, creative um, firms are growing or coming to ecological and social challenges in ever-growing numbers. Um, how we as Good Be support social entrepreneurs and social enterprises, um, you'll, you'll discover shortly. So, Ich wünsche Ihnen einen informativen Abend, Inspiration für Ihre eigenen Projekte und natürlich have fun tonight. So I've been asked to say a few words um, about uh, the ways in which my institution and the team that I'm um, leading uh, is supporting social entrepreneurs. Um, and I'd also like to share my thoughts with you and hopefully after I'm done, hear your thoughts on how our respective paths might actually intersect um, in the coming months and years. Goodby was established uh, in 2008 with capital from the Erste Foundation um, and the Erste Stiftung, Erste Foundation and Erste Group, excuse me. Um, since inception, our strategic mission has been to, to innovate new methods to ensure that all individuals and firms in the areas where the Erste Group is actually present have access to responsible financial services. And by responsible, we mean any product or service which matches the needs and the means of our customers. Believe it or not, there are actually about 35 million adults in Central and Eastern Europe who actually have no uh, relationship to a bank. And this concerns us probably not necessarily for the reason that you would, you would expect. We regard access to basic financial services as one of the many tools that allow people to become fully engaged, fully active, participating members of their communities. Financial services in and of themselves are not uh, an, end, uh, an end in and of themselves. We regard them as a means to an end, um, and that is social and economic inclusion. So shortly after our team was set up, we realized that we actually shared a heck of a lot in common um, with this so-called class of social entrepreneurs, uh, people who were effectively working toward the same goal as us, social and economic inclusion in our communities, but weren't necessarily using the same products we were, but obviously using other means. Um, we also quickly realized, however, that uh, social entrepreneurs faced similar difficulties um, that mainstream entrepreneurs faced, and that was obviously lack of access to capital. And that is why, with the support of our colleagues in, um, throughout the Erste Group, we have launched uh, social enterprise finance um, throughout the eight countries where Erste Bank is actually present. And here I would like to introduce quickly my colleague Andrea Pichad. Andrea, please stand up. Andrea is the head of our social enterprise finance team. Uh, a huge talent for the team and definitely get to know Andrea. I'm sure that we will find many ways of cooperating together. But before I go in any further, actually, um, I want to preempt one of the questions, which I think you might actually have. Um, there's been a lot of hype in recent years behind the term social entrepreneurship, social enterprise, social business. Um, and frankly, if we had 10 experts on the topic in this room, you would probably get at least eight different opinions on what actually social entrepreneurship is. 
but we don't actually want to get into a debate uh, and talk semantics of what social entrepreneurship is. We actually thought um, the best thing to do would, to give you, would be to give you an example of the type of firms that we actually support. Um, and we're fortunate to actually have one of those uh, institutions in the room with us tonight. Um, and you will get to see her example shortly. Mrs. Goldfold uh, runs Garbarage. Please, Mrs. Goldfold, also say hello. Um, and you'll get to know a little bit about her firm, whose shop you might know in the Schleifmüllgasse. These armchairs are made of 70-year-old suitcases. Somehow this whole room is reminiscent of one of the best-known film classics of all time. Casablanca. The decor of this hotel room was inspired by the classic U.S. romantic drama, which was made in 1942. The furniture evokes the famous love story immortalized by Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman. The furniture was designed by Michael Hensel together with the Gabarage company. For example, this cupboard made from the wood of an old piano. All of his designs are inspired by old movies. The Gabarage workshop is in Vienna. The designers use material that's been donated to the company or comes from fleet markets. The company's agenda isn't only creative. A lot of the people here are former addicts. The job helps them prepare for a return to normal life. Gabarage has been upcycling for nine years, but has ventured into unknown territory with the hotel project. It can take months to complete a single hotel room. So for us, uh, for Good B, those institutions which are in scope um, with respect to our activities are those institutions whose primary purpose for existing is to address a social problem. Um, and I'm sure this slide um, will bring you close to sleep, actually. Um, but this is actually an official definition uh, recently published by the European Commission of what they consider a social enterprise to be. The good news is actually um, there's a lot of momentum behind um, social entrepreneurship, social uh, business in Europe at the moment. Um, and with this criteria and with these definitions, hopefully uh, we will start to see uh, some public funds flowing into the sector, EU funds flowing into the sector, such that lack of access to capital is the least or will be the least of social entrepreneurs' concerns. We've learned, however, um, as good be in the past year and a half, that capital really isn't the only hurdle in the way of success of many social, social businesses and social entrepreneurs. Um, particularly in our region, we see that social entrepreneurs or the movement is really growing out of the NGO sector. Um, so many NGOs think, and we would certainly agree, that starting a commercial activity is not only an excellent way to engage their base, their, their beneficiary group, um, it's also an excellent way to sort of lessen their dependence on, on charity. Um, and whilst obviously NGOs have a great understanding of the social challenges in their communities and might even have some very good business ideas, what some of them lack, or many of them lack, unfortunately, are the, the skills they need to, to start or run a business. Um, for that reason, um, my team and other members of the Esther and other members of the Esther Group and other like-minded partners have started to offer capacity building in the form of financial planning and business planning to social entrepreneurs. Um, our expertise, however, of course, is limited to matters generally of a financial nature. Um, we're also building communities um, of like-minded partners throughout the region to lend expertise in matters that are a little bit outside of our purview. So law, um, tax, and probably some disciplines that are actually represented in this room tonight as well. So that's where we hope and think uh, we might have some scope for cooperation. Um, in addition to obviously the possibility of you or people in the creative industry starting social businesses, we've listed a number of other ideas um, how you could actually help and support um, the development of the sector. Um, I've listed some here and I assume that presentations will be made available, but we would love to hear your ideas um, and gauge your interest and talk to you after the, uh, talk to you after the presentations and hope that there's scope for some cooperation and collaboration in the future. Thank you.